G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. With Gaijin implementing the highly unpopular battle rating changes, it has become apparent that they are very much unaware of how their battle ratings function. They seriously don't know how to curate a good set of battle ratings, and that's where I've decided to step in. Today, what we're going to do is have a look at some battle rating proposals from me. I've devised a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is in the link in the description below. So I want you guys to follow along. And I also want you guys to give your feedback because unlike Gaijin, I'll actually listen to what you guys have to say. And if you can make a good enough argument, then we can go along. Of course, none of these are final. None of these have any weight uh, as any form of implementation in the game. Uh, it's a little bit of a fun thought experiment, but I think this would be a really good way to get a conversation going. Not that Gojin will particularly listen, but you know, the more screaming voices, the more potential that we have to actually make some change. Now, before we begin, I would just like to let you guys know that if you would like to support the channel in any way, because this work does take a little bit of effort and time, um, I would suggest that you go down into the description below and if you guys are going to purchase something from the Gaijin store use my affiliate link in the description below but of course if you don't want to do that you can always buy some merch or you can use the air models affiliate link in the description as well alternatively there is patreon or you can subscribe to me on twitch or become a member whatever you'd like uh, but either way just sort of leaving likes comments and sort of contributing to the community is is really all i care about anyway because at the end of the day, this is uh, sort of a bit of a passion project for me. Now, without further ado, let's get into these battle ratings. And of course, remember, before we get into them, we are sort of not finalizing. These aren't concrete. I am happy to change them around because I don't uh, play heaps of this every single plane at Jets. So I'm not 100% familiar with every single aircraft. I have to make a rough guesstimate uh, of some of these. But, you know, I think I have a fair clue. Anyways, starting with 7.0, we have the F-80A, the F-84B, the F-3D1, all ME262As except for the Pulsar Stora, the Horton 229, the MiG-9, the SU-9, all attackers, and the Kika. These planes are the beginning of jets. They are somewhat similar to, uh, either very similar to props in some ways, or they have very jet-like characteristics and are sort of narrow in their scope of fighting. So 7.3 is unsuitable, uh, but at the same time, that 7.0 is a, uh, a sort of fair game for them. Now, at uh, 7.3, I've put all the F-89s, the F-80C, which is a slightly improved F-80A. It has traditionally been put at 7.7, .7, but I don't believe it is 7.7 .7 worthy. I think it's more 7.3 worthy. We're going to put the ME262C1A, the Arado 234C, the MiG-9 Late, the SU-11. Now, with the SU-11, let me know, maybe 7.7 .7 is a little bit better, but I just thought 7.3 might be a little bit in that sort of mid-ground there. The 7.7s, 8.0s, and 8.3s are quite strong, and I think they'll do enough to keep the SU-11 at bay. Next up, the Meteor F3, all R2Y2s, and the Oregon and Baragon, as well as the SK60B. Now, the Oregon and Baragon are 7.7s at the moment. I don't really think they should be 7.7. .7. They are quite unremarkable. If you think about it, no one really plays them, so they are better off at 7.3. The other plane here is the SK60B, and while the SK60 is at 7.0 currently, I think 7.3 is a little bit more suitable just because it is such a strange creature. It has really, really strong turning capabilities and has really, really good guns. But of course, it bleeds a lot of speed in turns. It has trouble keeping energy. And that's why it is at such a low battle rating because people just tend to turn and burn with it. But it's got what I believe or what I call uh, ME163 syndrome. It, it doesn't have the ability to just keep on going, keep on going. It has to play its cards very strategically. Otherwise, you're going to end up in shit. So I think if this plane is played properly, it's fine at 7.3. So, moving on to 7.7, .7, we have the F-84G, the F-84F, the 262C2B, the LA-200, the Vampire, the Sea Meteor, the Meteor Mark IV, the Short Wing and Long Wing, the Seahawk, the Sea Venom, the Vampire, the Mystere 2A, the A-28B, and the Finnish Vampire, the J-29A, A-29B, and the Meteor NF-13. These are all planes that are starting to get into that real energy retention uh, and sort of dogfighty style of jets uh, right before the real quick sort of high fast pace type that you get at the 8.7s. I think 7.7 .7 is probably as low as I would cut it for these planes. 
a lot of these are very capable, uh, but they really don't stand a, a chance against other things, and especially planes that top out above 1,100 kilometers per hour. They just don't belong there, and so 7.7 .7 is a good spot. 8.0, we are moving on. We have the F9F-2 and F9F-5. I believe these planes are pretty rubbish at 8.0. They don't hold a candle to the other 8.0s. Uh, sorry, the other 8.3s or the 8.7s. I think they always lose out just because they are slightly inferior and they are, you know, not quite up there. But they certainly fit the 8.0 quite nicely, in my opinion. I'm going to throw the B-57A there simply because it's got no guns. The F-2H Banshee, the IL-28, the LA-15 and 174, T-14, the Meteor Mark 8s, the Canberra Mark II, again, for the same reason that the B-57A is there. The H5, which is essentially an IL-28, the G91 Pre, and the Pre is the only one that is potentially contentious here. Uh, I think that it is just uh, a little bit, little bit bad, just a little bit. The guns are kind of not punchy. Um, it's got a good top speed. It's about 1050. It turns quite well. But the problem is at those high speeds, you tend to rip your wings. So unless something's changed, I think 8.0 is a good BR for it. Moving on to 8.3, we have the F-86A5, the F-9F-8, all 163s, the MiG-15 non-BIS, the Yak-30D, the Yak-23, the Venom, the Swift F-1, the Javelin, the Canberra Mark VI, the Ki-200, the G-91R1, simply because it tops out at t uh, sort of like 1080, 1090, something like that, but it also does uh, suffer the same problems. We're going to also throw the CL-13 Mark IV, which is a is an F-86A5, basically. The Mystere 2C, the Mystere 4A, which are very similar in their performance envelope, the Saab 105s, and the A4H, as well as, of course, the A4B in the American tech tree. We're going to throw at 8.7 the A4E, the F-86, F-25, and 35, the FJ-4B, the MiG-15 BIS, the G91R3 and R4, all MiG-15 BISs, the C Vixen, the Swift F-7, the Scimitar, the F-86 F-30, the uh, J-2, the SMB-2, the Vortor 2B, the J-29F, J-29D, Sa'ar, Sambad, and of course the Israeli A-4E and A-4M. The uh, SMB-2 is an interesting one. It currently sits at 9.0. I'm going to throw it down to uh, 8.7 just because of its horrible energy retention it really does put the plane in a really compromising situation. It is fast, it does have missiles, it has good guns, but the moment you are on the back foot, the SMB2 is simply garbage, and it just doesn't even hold a candle in turning engagements to many of the other planes, especially once it's below that 500 mark, which it will be quite quickly. The Vortor 2B is also an interesting one. It is 8. Point, uh, I believe it's 9.0 at the moment, but it's got no armament. It tops out at 1050 or 1100, something along those lines, um, and is also fairly vulnerable. And because I'm going to put the other Vortours at 9.0, I think it's fair that the Vortour 2B goes a little bit further down. Likewise, for the J29F and J29D, I believe they're side grades of each other and should be at the same battle rating. The J29F is sort of comparable to the MiG-15 BIS, uh, the J29D is at the, in the same boat there. So I think these planes, you know, they fit 8.7 quite well. 9.0, we have the F-86 F-2, the F-4D. Now, let me know about this one in particular. I'm not very sure about the F-4D. It is quite quick. Maybe it can go to 9.3 with another plane that we'll discuss later. I'm going to put the Lim 5P at 9.0 as well because I believe that the afterburning power of the Lim 5P yeah, sort of trades it. It's, it's kind of a side grade to the MiG-17 because it doesn't have the 37. Um, and it also is a little bit heavier. So the Lim 5P can also stay at 9.0 with the CL-13A, the MiG-17, the Buccaneer S1, the Hunter F1, the F-86 F-40s, that is the higher powered Sabres with the missiles, the J-4, the Ariete and Sagittario 2 can also go there. Let me know about those ones. I haven't flown them in a long time. We're going to throw the Vortours, that is all the other Vortours with missiles and with the uh, guns as well the Itonda, the A32A, and the J34. Now, the J34, at a glance, appears to be a Hunter with missiles, and most of you would point to the Hunter FGA-9 and wonder why it's not at 9.0 with it, and that's because the J34 is actually considerably weaker. 
it's got a less powerful engine and that results in lower energy retention and a lower top speed giving it a top speed that is akin to the MiG-15 BIS with missiles. So it doesn't really do a lot of uh, great things that you would expect. You would kind of expect it to be like the Hunter FGA-9, but in fact, it is deceiving. The A32A is also a real pain in the bum, but it is a ground attacker, so I think 9.0 is fair for a ground attacker of this caliber. At 9.3, we have the F-11F1, which is a supersonic aircraft, so maybe the F-4D can sit alongside the F-11F1. We also have the CL-13B, the F-86K, the Buccaneer S-2, the Shenyang F-5, the G-91Y, the one without the missiles, the F-86Ks on the Italian and French trees, and the Israeli A-4N. Now, I'm not sure about the A4N, but let me know about that one. I'm pretty confident, however, on the rest of the picks there. I think 9.3 is perfectly fine. It puts them away from the 8.0s, uh, and it gives them a little bit more sort of distance and a bit more room to shine. So I think that's fair for all of these. At 9.7, I'm going to throw the F3H2, the F100D, the Yak-28B, the MiG-21F and PFM, the Hunter FGA-9, the F100A, the J72, the G91YS. These planes are all either really, really good subsonics or like sort of very basic supersonics. The Yak-28B is a really good, uh, really quick bomber. It lacks pretty much everywhere else. Everywhere else. Uh, but the F-100D can catch it quite easily. The Hunter FGA-9 can likely catch it as well. Um, and planes like the MiG-21F and PFM have really good engine performance but suffer in pretty much everywhere else. So I think 9.7 is that sort of entry-level supersonic or that like really, really high-end subsonic area. So I, I think this is appropriate. We're going to keep them away from those sort of 8.3s and give them a little bit of, uh, of reprieve from something like the uh, F-100D versus F-9F-8. I think that's not very fair at all. So the... Uh, at 10.0, we're going to go for the AV-8A and C, the MiG-19S, the SU-11, uh, sorry, the SU-7, uh, the Yak-38s, the MiG-19PT, the Harrier GR-3, Jaguar GR-1, all Lightnings, Hunter F-6, J-6A, Q-5, and the J-32B. Now, the J-32P could potentially be a 9.7 candidate. Let me know on that one. Uh, but I think all of these are pretty much supersonic or have very, very high avionics capabilities. So, for example, the Harrier, I consider avionics to be, you know, like flares and missiles, the potency of, of both of those. Um, I think that the AV-8 has a really, really strong showing here with those immense amount of flares and, of course, the two AIM-9Gs, as well as its ability to hover. So it does give it a little bit of an edge here and there, and I think that that puts it over the line above the F-100. Moving on to 10.3, we have the F-104A and C, the A7D and E, the MiG-23BN, the SU-25s, the MiG-21S, the Harrier GR-1 and the Jaguar GR-1A, all T2s. Now, the T2s could probably be a 10.0. Let me know on that one. Uh, the F-104A can also go there in the Chinese tree. The Milan and the J-35A are also 10.0 candidates. Now, the Milan is not very good, and the J-35A gets superseded pretty quickly. So maybe these guys could be a 10.0 uh, a candidate. But again, let me know on that one. I'm not 100% sure. I've never flown the Milan, but I have extensively tested the J-35A. Maybe if Defen is watching this video, he can, uh, he can give me a comment or two. I would love to hear his feedback specifically, because he's a better pilot than I am. So moving on to 10.7, I put the F-4C here. Now, the F-4C is a bit of a struggle bus, but it is pretty fast, and it does have AIM-7s, so it is able to dominate the higher altitudes. Not very well. I will have a video coming on it soon, uh, but the F-4C is a very good overall plane, but it's just sort of squashed in with all the other aircraft that sit around its battle ratings. It doesn't get a lot of air to breathe, and of course, we're only expanding by two battle rating spots, so I think the F-4C is just going to lose out no matter what battle rating we put it at. I'm going to throw the A-10A and A-10A uh, late at 10.7 as well, as well as the F-5A and C, the ones with AIM-9Es, the F-105D, the MiG-21 SPSK, the F-104G, the F-1, the F-104J, the A-5C. We're moving that cancer all the way from 10.0 to 10.7, and that'll give us plenty of breathing room 
away from those F-86s and CL-13s and the Hunter and the Sagittario. I think the A5 is just criminally under-tiered right now. So throwing it all the way up at 10.7 uh, is, is good. And I'm not going to throw it all the way to our top BR of 12, to, to face our top BR of 12.0 by putting it at 11.0. I think that would be criminal because putting any premiums above this level is really just going to ruin the battle ratings. It's going to sort of put those players that have just gotten into the game and just bought a high tier premium it's going to put them within spitting distance of things like the f14 and the mirage 2000 so i think having that is a little bit criminal so we're gonna we're gonna just give them a little bit of reprieve and allow them to go and sort of wallow in their own little battle rating there that being said i think the a10a and the uh mig 21 spsk and the a5c all have enough distance there uh and it and sort of you know we're starting to let the battle ratings breathe a bit more we could ultimately go for a battle rating 13 but it's really just like this is something that gaijin could actually do going to 13 it's not really going to be feasible i think they would be less likely to look at these and go hey that's a good idea maybe we should implement some of it uh, or all of it but i think having a little bit of reasonable sort of meet in the halfway mark is going to be good here and maybe that'll get the conversation stirring in the right direction at least so finishing off our list for our glorious 10.7s we're going to throw the jaguar a and e the mirage 3c the f8e in the french tree and the aj37 now the f8e in the french tree is actually slightly inferior to the f8s in the uh, american tree they don't have rwr and i believe that the f8e has flares it's got two matra magics but you know having that ability to defend yourself in the in the form of the rwr uh, is a real benefit that the f8e does not have it's just that inferior french engineering so uh, we're going to put it at a slightly lower battle rating the other plane is the a37j or the aj37 uh, it's a pretty good plane it's basically a budget vegan uh, it does have the capabilities in my list to see things like the f4j the mla and the j8b i think that's fair and it has all the way down to the f100 the hunter fga9 and the g91 ys I think that's a little bit of a stretch, but again, with two spaces, that's all I'm really able to sort of give a bit of reprieve. At the moment, it sees all the way down to 9.3, so yeah, anything is an improvement over that. Now, on to our 11.0s. We have both F8 Crusaders, we have the F4Fs, the German Phantoms, the MiG-21 MF, the MiG-27s, maybe they could go up to 11.3, we'll have a discussion in the comments. The SU-11, the MiG-21 SMT, the Mirage 3E, the J-35D, the Mirage 3CJ, and the Kfir C-2. Now, they, these planes are all starting to get into the supersonic era. These are all planes that can potentially face the top jets. And, of course, they do this already. And, in fact, I don't really think much of it has changed. It's sort of just the middle area that I've rearranged. Um, so, more or less, you'll sort of see same, same. The only exception here is the MiG-21 MF and the F-4F early. Uh, I believe they don't see the uh, top battle rating. I can't quite remember. I think it might be 10.3 that the F-4F early sits at, but my memory fails me. The MiG-21 MF is also actually able to see the top tier jets. So I don't know, I think not much has changed here. It's just a little bit of extra space so that the aircraft can breathe. And of course, that 9.0 to 10.7 is where most of the breathing room is actually happening. Now, moving on to 11.3, we have the F4E, the F5E, the MiG-23 MF, the MiG-21 BIS SAU, the MiG-23 M, the MiG-21 BIS, the F4E J without the pulse Doppler radar, the J7E, the F5A and E, that is the ones with the AIM-9Ps, the f 104 s the one with the uh, 9Js, the Mirage F1C and CT. I have a very, very low opinion of these aircraft, but for those of you that do have a higher opinion and consider it to be sort of a little bit more worth a, a higher BR, let me know, and maybe we can have a discussion about that. I'm going to throw the Swedish or the uh, Finnish MiG-21 BIS, the Kfir C7 as well in the Israeli tech tree altogether. These are planes that are mostly capable of facing these higher jets, these sort of 12.0s, uh, but it's not quite there at the level. Now, at 11.7, I'm going to put the F4J, the MLA, the MLD, all British Phantoms, the Harrier GR7, the F4EJ Kai, the J8B, the F104S ASA, and the JA37C 
I'm not going to put the F14A and the Mirage 2K at the 11.7 and I'm going to throw them in at 12.0 because I think 12.0 is a bit of a standout BR. It also sort of allows us to provide for our next generation, now sort of uh, rank 8 aircraft. A lot of these are probably going to file in at the 12.0 battle rating and uh, the, or at least at the level of the F-14A and the Mirage 2000 which is a really good thing for the balance of top tier jets but I think we need to provide for that in terms of a battle rating, a separate battle rating. Now the F-14 has unique capabilities, it's extremely fast. I believe it is if one of, if not the single fastest jet at top tier. It has a unique uh, capability, it's got probably the best missiles in the game and it has got the best radar in the game. Now the Mirage 2000 isn't as good as the F-14, I think that they are quite similar, they are very close. But the Mirage 2000 also has Martra Magic 2s. It's got those two really good semi-active radar guiding missiles. And it has excellent flight performance, which makes it a really powerful plane. It kind of sets it apart from all the other aircraft here. It's just able to do just that little bit more than, say, the JA-37 or the uh, F-4E Kai. I think it kind of sets itself in a little bit of a league of its own there. So I am going to put it at 12.0. And that should do it for all of our battle ratings. In the next coming days, we're going to find out what jets will comprise of the rank 8. Uh, I am expecting future F-14s, maybe F-14Bs, Ds. Uh, I'm kind of expecting a later MiG-23 with uh, more powerful air-to-air -air missiles. Um, as for everyone else, maybe Pan Panavia Tornadoes, um, F-15s, early F-16s, which would probably fall around the F-4J or the F-14A's performance. Uh, F-20, all of these types of planes, um, later Vigans, and of course, we have the battle rating space now. We don't even have to let them be cramped in when they come to the game. I think the beauty of this system is that I already have it prepared, and there is literally no other work, no other reshuffling that you need to do, and of course, we, it's, it's pretty much all set to go, and the, the great thing is that because I've played so much of Jets, especially over the last three years, uh, I, I genuinely think I have a fairly good grip on what the landscape is like. And as a result, I feel like I have a good idea of how to balance these appropriately. Um, unfortunately, I don't think Gaijin will listen to this, but I would just, you know, like to put this out there as a bit of a thought experiment or perhaps to get a conversation going. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of at my wits end here. I really am I've been screaming till I'm blue in the face about all of these problems and yet they never ever get listened to. I often feel like I'm talking to a brick wall or the funny voices that are going on in my head, but honestly, I just feel like I need to get these out and just have a chat about some things that could potentially be improved. Maybe I'm just sort of wishing for greener pastures and they'll never happen, but maybe I'm doomsaying, who knows? I just like to sort of show you these and, you know, say, what do you think? And I hope you guys really enjoy this and, you know, take this to be something interesting. If you guys would like to see more of this type of stuff, um, let me know in the comment section below. And of course, you can always support the channel through the decal link and the merch store and the Patreon and all of those wonderful things all down in the description below. Any support is absolutely amazing. I'm just about to purchase a uh, an RTX 4090 and that will go greatly to helping improve the quality of the content on the channel. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. I sincerely appreciate your time. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.